Hey, Jigger, I'm over here at your place. Uh, cute little place. Actually, you know what's funny is that I did this exact same model two weeks ago, uh, about half a mile down the road from here. So I had a pretty good idea of what to expect. Um, there are some things that definitely need to be addressed and uh, let me go ahead and take you through them. So you got spots at this corner. Uh, number one, you're missing this uh, masonry flashing that is supposed to be complete throughout here. This allows the masonry to have a good drainage plane over the top of the masonry ledge. Otherwise, what you don't want to happen is for any water that gets behind your stone to wick up underneath here and then into your structural wall. And then speaking of water wicking, this masonry ledge is as a negative slope that way toward the structure. So that is something that uh, ideally would be flat and that would help promote drainage if it had the proper, uh, the proper plane. But as you can see here, and this should be taped. This should be taped down. There shouldn't be, so you don't, what, you, what you don't want is for moisture to run down here and fall back against this, right? That should be taped. So here at the garage, these nails should be every three inches. Here there's space between every six and six and nine. They should be every three inches all the way up. In fact, speaking of, this sheathing has a break here at the top. You can see that little bit right there. Here's another example. It's gonna break right here behind these two pieces. Right there, if you can see it. Let me write it up for you. So that sheathing break should not be happening here at this section. And I'll give you a quick explanation of how important it is to get the garage openings right. So there's basically two ways that garage openings fail. Uh, number one is the doors blow in or blow out, whichever the case may be, and a hard wind enters and you've got uplift. So number one, you gotta make sure that you keep these down onto the foundation. Number two is these things can sort of fold over and turn into a, a giant rhombus, hinging at the top corners of the garage, right? So you have to make special, you have to take special care, make sure that these top corners don't hinge, that they are, uh, they're secure. Now, some of the ways to make sure that all of this is done properly is number one, like I mentioned, making sure that you don't have the sheathing break here at the top that should be in the middle here. Uh, number two, they've got the strap, which is good, that's required. They've got this top plate here, which is good, that's required. What they don't have is they don't have a 5 8 inch bolt and they don't have a double bottom plate. So those are two things that are required in the code book. Now, maybe their engineering design is different. Uh, I don't have the plans here, so I can't say. But uh, those are a couple things that I've noticed here on this garage opening. So this diagonal bracing here, this let in bracing, means that this wall is an interior shear wall, which also means that uh, the anchorage along the bottom should be equivalent to the anchorage that you have at an exterior wall. So that means having to uh, either have these little shot pins every eight inches, which they don't, or have anchor bolts every six feet, which they also have not done yet. Um, this is an easy enough fix. They just need to come in and put some more of these little shot pins in here. Now here at this exterior wall in the garage, I've noticed they've uh, had a little bit of trouble putting in the nails for this, this sheathing here. Now, this is so bad that it actually is, is flexing. Uh, if you push on it up there, you can see it's absolutely not connected. Same thing over here at, uh, which one was it? One of these. Anyway, um, this one here is totally missing nails. Look at that giant gap. So they need some more nails here at this OSB sheathing. Top plates, 
they're supposed to extend all the way over to the corner. You can see that big gap right there. There's a gap there, that one. That one has a gap. So this is sort of a, a weak area at this corner of the garage as far as that top plate goes. Here's another example of that sheathing that just didn't quite make it over. Not quite far enough. So this really needs another two by four right here. So here you can see these seams where the uh, top paper overlaps the bottom. Those should all be taped. Here, this doesn't extend far enough down to cover that OSB. Same thing up there at that top window. So you can see these little green capped fasteners that are up here. Those are required according to the manufacturer of this uh, building paper. You're missing them here in this corner. You're missing them down here. You're missing them up here. And then you're missing them uh, to the right and left. Well, sorry, to the right of this window. You're missing them as well. Up here in the porch, you've got this nice beam bearing on that column. And then over here, just kind of hanging out right there in the air. That should have a hanger on it. Here at the back porch, you can see all these hangers. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Until you get to this one, and you can see there's some nails missing right there. You gotta make sure that all those holes are filled. This is here at the back porch. Also here at the back, these windows have not been, uh, the paper's not been properly installed around them. I'll include links to the manufacturer's instructions and uh, some uh, screenshots of the graphics that uh, detail how these should be installed, but they're done wrong. They should wrap around so there's no exposed wood up there. Same thing here, really. Now, they've already put siding up here, so I can't inspect behind that. I'm, I'm sure it's 100% perfect. Um, but they have not installed the brick, or the stone, rather. So it is, uh, I am able to take a look at this. Now, again, these seams need to be taped. In fact, these seams are short. They're supposed to have a lot more overlap than that. This is less than uh, the minimum. So, and then that all needs to be wrapped up and taped tight. What you don't want is any moisture to fall behind this and then get into uh, the, uh, the wooden sheathing there that can deteriorate. Plus you're missing all those uh, plastic capped fasteners. And it's not taped. Oh, that's gonna be in the report. All right, so we're gonna get real nitpicky here. One thing I noticed is that these hangers here and here, they're uh, the, um, the truss that is sitting in them is further than one eighth of an inch from the uh, this beam right here that they're supposed to be attached to. The issue there, according to the manufacturer, is that these nails that go in diagonally don't bite enough of that truss. So because of that gap, now the problem is they also used short nails. I don't know if you can see this. This might be a better example. But you can see the points of those nails. They don't even go into that ledger beam. That's them right there just kind of chilling, hanging out. They don't go all the way in at all. So those nails aren't holding on to anything. In the same area, that same beam is uh, bearing right here at this hanger and then bearing over here. Now, in my opinion, it probably does not have sufficient bearing over here Looks like it's on, it's kind of halfway on this double top plate, which is just kind of barely on this piece of, of, of wood. It, to me, it does not look like it has sufficient bearing. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have another two by four installed along here all the way down to make sure that has enough direct bearing onto the foundation. Coming into the uh, primary bathroom, up here, this top plate, you see this break in the top plate comes over to this header. There should be a strap 
but that connects these two together. Same thing on this side. Interior braced wall here, the shear wall. Um, again, missing the proper anchorage here at the primary bedroom. Now it wouldn't hurt to have another two by four or two right here between these four and these four. So right about there to give you that complete load path from the beam up in the attic down to the foundation. Here at the uh, living room, again, need a strap between that top plate and that uh, beam header. One reoccurring theme I'm seeing here with these hangers is fasteners that are missing. Yeah, of course you need, you need nails in, in every single hole. So there's quite a few around that are missing nails. Okay, so it looks like they had originally put in the lead-in bracing here, had to cut it out for this, and completely pulled it out of each of these studs. The problem is this leaves you with an overly notched two by four, an overly notched stud. Now, at, uh, at this shear wall, uh, this, this should not be cut greater than 25% of its width. Uh, this is three and a half inches and this is a one inch cut. So it's a little bit more than 25%. And you got one, two, three, four of them in a row that are cut like that. Uh, wouldn't hurt to put some supplemental support there. Should have an anchor bolt right down here. You got a, a shot pin, but no anchor bolt. His duct coming up. Here's the zip tie that should be holding this onto the stub out. So you can see right here, all this insulation is missing this stub out, which is gonna cause that to condensate and this possibly to tear off in the future.